Picking what civil engineering field to specialize in can be one of the toughest decisions. There are many different kinds of civil engineering fields out there. How should you choose what field to specialize in? I remember my younger self, I look a lot at salary. You go to a website and you start comparing salaries, but it didn't even matter because when I got out of college, I had to choose a job that was available. But for those who can choose, you may be tempted to do this because who doesn't want more money? But now that I've been in the transportation field for a while, I've come to appreciate some of the other factors. And honestly, I feel they're actually more important. In this video, I'm gonna talk about some of those other factors you definitely should not ignore. And I'm also gonna talk about why the easy and available salary data may not be as important as you think. I'm also going to talk a little bit about my own personal strategy for maximizing salary. Hey everyone, my name is Byron and I'm a traffic engineer based in San Francisco Bay Area in California, USA. Let's first start by talking about salary data. Comparing salaries may not be as simple as it sounds. There are many websites that collect salary data. You have your Indeeds, Glassdoor, salary.com. There are quite a few of them. A lot of them will list salaries of specific civil engineering fields. Here is one that shows the supposed average median salary of a transportation engineer. This data can mean a little more when you are trying to figure out a career path and you want to compare salaries between different fields. One problem that comes up is when you look at a particular salary for a field on different sites, the results can vary a lot. Not only that, when you compare, for example, a transportation engineer with other fields among all these sites, you can come up with very different rankings. A lot of this occurs because all these websites use different ways to collect the data and also some make adjustments to the data. That's just one difference you have to think about when it comes to salary data. There are others. Salary can also vary a lot according to the region you're from and other factors like cost of living make it even harder to determine the real value of your salary. For example, because I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, my salary will often look a lot higher than other regions in the US, but I have a much higher cost of living too. All of this makes salary data not that straightforward, so I would actually really question whether it's worth it to use salary data as the most important factor for making your decision on the career path that you want to take. And I've also been thinking about this for a while because when you actually look at the differences between salary of the civil engineering fields, there's not a big difference between all of them. A lot of these websites will have the lowest and highest field about 10 to 20 percent difference in salary which means if you're comparing the difference between two fields and one is in the middle of the pack, there's really not going to be that much of a difference. Yes, for choosing some fields of civil engineering over others, you may be able to eke out 5 to 15% more salary, but that may not be that big of a difference when it's all said and done because there are other factors that may affect salary even more. The first and most important thing is to start thinking about your career trajectory. Choosing your field may affect how you start, but how well you do in the long run is a whole different matter. I'm here in this video to get you to think about vertically how to get better and rise up, not to think horizontally. The following are, in my opinion, the more impactful factors that you should strongly consider when it comes to your career and salary. No matter what civil engineering field you choose, one of the largest impacts to your career trajectory will be who and where you work for. This is because when you enter the workforce as a newbie engineer, so much of what determines how well you start will be based on how much mentorship, training, and the type of work you will receive. Those that aren't in an environment that will help them thrive and master their profession will fall behind in the long term. So even if a position pays well, you have to ask yourself, how much will I be able to develop and learn working for this organization? Will I be able to work on a variety of tasks that will push me outside of my comfort zone? And are there opportunities that will help me gain experience and grow? And ultimately, will I be able to become the engineer that I ultimately envision myself to be. There are real differences in what your salary could be when you find this right organization to work for. Is it something you can control? To some extent, I believe you can. In one study, a group of men who graduated college within a span of a decade were tracked over 20 years. Some entered the workforce and started working when the economy was good, and some entered when it was bad. The people who graduated when the economy was bad, their wages could take up to two decades to catch up to those who started in a good economy. Two decades worth of wages can add up to a lot. Your first thought may be that the conclusion of the study is much of your wages is completely outside of your control. I mean, who can control when they enter the workforce during a bad or good economy? That is half true. It is only with careful examination of the reasons why this was happening can a strategy emerge. It is logically understood that one of the ways to optimize your salary 
is to match your skills with an employer who is in need of your skills. And those who don't have a job that matches well with their employer can seek to work for a different employer. Now, the reason why this is more difficult in a bad economy is there are less opportunities for people to make a change which means it is more harder to find a better fit. But being in a bad or good economy doesn't completely stop you from finding that good organization that is a great fit. So in order to maximize your salary, it's very important to focus on who and where you work for and to be able to recognize when you need to change jobs. The next question is about the topic of private sector versus public sector. I've worked in the public sector for all my career. If you're a civil engineer, this is something you're eventually gonna have to think about where you want to work for. At any one time, you can either be working in the public sector or the private sector. Public sector jobs are typically jobs by government agencies, while private sector jobs are from companies and corporations. It is completely different to work in one environment or the other in terms of pay, benefits and lifestyle. For the purposes of this conversation, the benefits that you receive from either one can dramatically change what I call the hidden salary. The hidden salary is not your base salary or the pay that you see on a job application, but it's all the other monetary benefits that come with the job. This is why I stress it's important to not just only look at the salary number that's listed on the job posting. And it becomes especially true if you're comparing a public sector job with a private sector job. You need to read the fine print. For example, since I work for a particular government agency, I'll get a pension when I retire and the value of that pension is determined by how long I've been working in the public sector. This is money that will be paid continuously to me after I retire and I'm no longer working and it's typically only available with public sector jobs. Private sector jobs usually will not have that benefit so they will either offer more pay or additional benefits like payment into a private retirement account or stock options. You really need to look closely and consider what is more valuable to you in the long run for you and your lifestyle. If it's worth having a career in the private sector or the public sector. You may want to even plan out that you're going to start in the private sector and then you're going to eventually transition to the public sector or the other way around. Many engineers that I met have done this at some point even multiple times. The point is don't just look at the salary on the job posting. Read the fine print and take some time to learn what these benefits are and how much they are worth to you. Lastly, the most important advice that I would give when it comes to choosing a civil engineering field to specialize in is that you should choose something that you are naturally good at and or interested in. There's some debate if people can naturally be good at something, but it didn't take long for me to realize that I was a lot better at transportation engineering than structural engineering when I was studying in college. There's a lot of research out there that points to people experiencing higher levels of enjoyment when they are doing something they are good at. It's a positive feedback loop. One experience leads to success and enjoyment, which then builds on the next experience. But it can work in the opposite way too. If you're miserable and don't like the field you're working in, with all else being equal, you're just not gonna do as well, which is gonna equal lower salary. If you're less interested in the subject matter, you're probably gonna learn at a slower rate. You will also less likely be happy and fulfilled, which can translate to lower job performance. This is not only important for your career earnings, but also for your long-term stability and mental health. It's hard to put a number on being passionate, skilled, and growth-oriented. It's hard to be all those things if you're miserable and you chose the wrong field because you went in it solely because of salary. So those are some of the key factors that I feel are just as important when it comes to choosing a civil engineering field to work in. I prefer instead of paralyzing myself with analysis on what field to choose, to optimize these other factors when it comes to my career and salary. Think of it as thinking vertically instead of horizontally. When you do that, not only will the optimizing of your salary probably take care of itself, you'll end up much more happier too. Thank you for watching and I hope this video helps you in your civil engineering career. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.